welcome to my youtube channel pcm academy in the last class we have discussed about basic definition of central force and we categorized central force for one body system two body system and more than two body system but we have told you that for more than two body system we can't solve mathematically but for two body system we have a mathematical tool that we can solve we can reduce actually from two body to one body problem then we can solve so today my topic is that equivalent of one body problem so equivalent of two body problem into a one body problem or equivalent one body problem you can say so let us suppose a two body problem so let me take a conventional coordinate system suppose in this coordinate system the two body that is m1 and m2 where the position of m1 with respect to m2 is r and m1 have the position vector r1 whereas m2 have the position vector r2 m2 have the position vector r2 so this is our two body system now what we have to do we have to make a equivalent of this two body system before going to that let me write down the equation of motion for mass m1 and m2 that is the newton second law so for m1 for the object m1 the equation of motion will be m1 r1 double dot that is mass into acceleration is equal to force on m1 due to m2 that will be f12 plus any other external force from outside for the third object you can say that is f1 external f1 external so this is our equation of motion for the first body m1 now for the equation of motion of second body we can write similarly that m2 r2 double dot is equal to force on m2 due to m1 that is f21 plus external force acting on m2 that is f2 so f2 external so this is our two equations but the problem is that we can't solve this two equation but instead of this here you can see this force is very complicated external force is very complicated but if we convert this two equation into equivalent one equation then we can solve easily then we can come back we can come back for this two equation also for this two body separately also so this is very complete these two equations are very complicated this is a differential equation and this f1 external f2 external and f1 to f r f21 and f12 are also the function of r and f1 external and f2 external are completely unknown so this is a very complicated situation we have so let me modify this to equation little bit then you can understand now suppose you let, let me multiply this equation of 1 with m2 and equation 2 with m1 now if you multiply this equation with m2 this will be m2 m1 so this will be your m2 f1 to and m2 f1 now if you multiply this equation with m1 this will be m1 m2 that will be m1 f2 and this will be m1 f2 external now if you subtract this two equation what you will get you can take common m1 m2 so it will be m1 m2 into r1 double dot minus r2 double dot equal to you can write this as m2 f1 to m2 f1 to minus m1 f21 plus we have m2 f1 external plus sorry minus m1 f2 external m1 f2 external so this is a simplified form now let me take common m1 m2 from here and you know according to newton's third law that f12 will be minus f21 so if we take common f12 or f21 that will be same because f12 is equal to minus f21 so let me take common it so it will be just f12 let me take and that will be plus sign because f12 is equal to minus f21 now what we will do we will take common m1 m2 from here also so if you take common m1 m2 from here m1 m2 from here then what will be so the, here will be m1 so here m1 m1 will cancel out this will be m2 and here also will be m2 so this is your equation now 
let me divide the whole equation with m1 plus m2 then what you will get you will get just m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 and this r1 double dot minus r2 double dot is nothing but r because you know from your basic mathematics basic uh, triangle of vector addition that this r will be r1 minus r2 so r double dot will be r1 double dot minus r2 double dot so this will be r double dot and that is equal to f12 vector plus we have m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into we have f1 external by m1 f1 external by m1 minus f2 external by m2 so this will be our equation now let me take this m1 m2 divided by m1 m2 as a single object of mass mu so if we take this as a reduced mass mu which have mass m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 then our equation will be converted in a very simplified form and that is nothing but mu r double dot we have mu r double dot is equal to just f12 plus we have mu again into f1 external by m1 f1 external by m1 minus f2 external by m2 by m2 so this is your final equation now this f1 external f2 external is completely unknown for us this can be happen for third object suppose we have earth moon system and there is a sun so sun will be as a third object will give force on m1 and on m2 also so that can be the f external but there are a lot of effect may be there so that this f1 external and f2 external will be so complicated so let me neglect this f1 external and we can take pure as a two body system so if this f external f1 external either f1 external or f2 external is absent then we can take it as purely a two body system so that is let me take as case one so this equation can be converted in this way so if you take that in case one we can completely ignore f1 external and f2 external so that will be zero so in that case our mu r dot equal to f1 dot one two so this is our equation of motion otherwise let me suppose that there is a third object but that is very far from this two f1 and f2 in that case what will happen let me take that suppose this is our this is our suppose earth and uh, moon suppose earth and moon and here is sun so suppose earth has mass let me take as m1 and this is m2 and the sun mass ms so this is r1 and this is r2 and along this this is just r so the gravitational force given by s to e what will be the gravitational force that will be g ms m1 divided by r1 square that is our f1 external but if you divide this force expression by m1 then we will get f1 external by m1 because you know f1 external will be just g ms m1 divided by r1 square but if you take here as m1 so f1 external by m1 is equal to g ms by r1 square similarly f2 external by m2 will be g ms by r2 square but if the sun is very from far away from earth and moon then we can take this r1 and r2 as same and the angle between these two is also very small so that this will be parallel so the uh, direction of force will also be same so in that case this f1 external by m1 and f2 external by m2 will be equal so with this logic also we can neglect this term okay so if we ignore this term either in this way that completely f external is zero there is no third object or if there is a third object that is very far away from this m1 and m2 
So in both the cases, we will reach to this equation that is m r double dot mu r double dot is equal to f 1 2. Now the question is that what this equation represent? This mu r double dot is equal to f 1 2 what this equation represent? This is basically equation of motion of mu. As we have in our equation 1 and equation 2 we have seen that the equation of motion for m 1 was m 1 r double dot f 1 2 similarly m 2 r double dot f 2 1. But here you can see that is mu r double dot f 1 2 what it means. It means that this is the equation of motion of mu which have the position vector r. So, as we have equation of motion of mu 1 which have position vector r 1, equation of motion for m 2 position vector r 2. Similarly, we have equation of motion for mu with position vector r. But the big question is that at which point from which point this r we have to be drawn. Because here r 1 is from this point and r 2 is also from this point. But from where this r have to be drawn. So, we will choose this origin of r very intelligently such that this r will not be changed with respect to time. So, we have to find a point of this system m1 and m2 such that that point will be fixed for each and every time with respect to time. And that point will obviously be the center of mass of this two body system. And let us suppose that the center of mass of this two body system is here. So, the position vector of this is r center of mass r center of mass. And now we have to take the origin of r of this point. So, let us draw the position vector r from this point along this direction where the mass mu is situated. Now with respect to this origin, the equation of motion of mu is this because this is mu r double dot is equal to f12. So, the motion of this point mu is equivalent to the motion of this system. So, we can easily solve this equation mu r double dot is equal to f12. So, we will get from here r if we solve this differential equation, we will get r obviously. So, we will get r as a function of time. Now, as soon as we get r, what we have to do? We have to now come back to this system for m1 m2 that is we have to actually find out r1 r2 our goal is basically to find out r1 and r2 as a function of time not r but for simplicity we have converted two body system into one body system and we have write down this equation mu r double dot is equal to f1 to where mu is equal to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 and if you solve this equation you will get r of t but this r of t we don't want to find we want to find r1 and r2 so we have to find r1 and r2 from this r and that is very easy because we have two equation already one equation is nothing but r is equal to r1 minus r2 and another equation that from the definition of center of mass we can write that r center of mass is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 divided by m1 plus m2 so if we know r and if we know r center of mass and already we have m1 m2 so, we can find out R1 and R2 from this two equation. So, it is very easy now. This is just a one body problem. This is a very basic form of Newton's second law. So, we can easily find out R from here and by using this two equation, we can find out R1 and R2. So, we do not need to solve two equations separately for M1 and M2. We can convert two system into equivalent one body system of mass mu which have a position vector R with respect to the center of mass of M1 and M2. And now, if you solve this two equation, we will get the required result. So, this is how we can solve two body system, complicated two body system into one body problem uh, by converting into one body problem. And there are many examples of this we will discuss in the next class for double star that is binary star. So, the motion of binary, binary star can be well explained by using the concept of reduced mass or the equivalent one body problem. So, we will discuss that in the next class. So, for today, thank you. And if you are new in this channel, then please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification in the next class also. Okay.